Energy. It is the challenge of the 21st century. This challenge will be solved in part with new ways to produce the energy we all need. These new technologies and market methods will assure abundant, renewable energy supplies for future generations while providing unprecedented opportunities for funds, corporations, and individuals. Peter Fusaro, Chairman of Global Change Associates, is a best-selling author and keynote speaker noted for his lively and cutting-edge insights into global energy and environmental issues. With leading-edge expertise in global energy markets, new and emerging technologies, and keen insight, Peter Fusaro and Global Change Associates bring clarity to the green investor. I've spent 33 years on energy and environmental issues. I worked as a policy analyst under the Ford, Carter, and Reagan administration at the Department of Energy, helped get the lead out of gasoline, worked on uh, LNG safety and siting. Native New Yorker, worked with Mayor Koch's energy office on establishing some of the first energy efficiency programs in the country called Enlightened Energy in the 80s. I uh, worked with Toyota and the Prius 12 years ago. So I've been in the trenches forever, and it's a pleasure to see this market growing and the tent getting bigger. We're six billion metric tons of CO2. That's our carbon footprint. And we're gonna do everything it takes to reduce that carbon footprint. So that's gonna be a lot more innovation, a lot more new technology, and a lot more efficiency. You have to remember, the US economy was built on cheap energy due to abundant natural resources. We were blessed. It was a highly inefficient economy. That's going to change across multiple sectors. The nonsense that we cannot afford this is not true. McKinsey numbers, the worldwide web of wealth, $140 trillion. US wealth, $47.6 trillion. We have deep pools of capital that are waiting to be deployed, and mostly from the private equity side of the house, not clean tech venture, not from hedge funds, and they're waiting. The key stumbling block is, what's the price of carbon? If the price doesn't exist on your pro forma, you're not going to see a lot of deployment of better technology. The idea behind all this is, politically, you're going to create lots of jobs in green. I've placed six of my interns from Columbia University on Wall Street. There's a dearth of intellectual capital in this sector, and there's a lot of opportunity. As people on Wall Street like to say, this is the new alpha. So this is the best opportunity to transform not just the U.S. economy, but the global economy. Which companies do you feel are really at the vanguard looking at the markets really from, from an upside perspective? Well, there's actually a more fundamental question. Most of corporate America, Fortune 1000, has not measured its carbon footprint. The companies that have measured the carbon footprint are the energy companies, specifically electric utilities and oil and gas companies. BP, for example, runs a P&L on carbon for 56 business units. And therefore, they incent their business units to make money doing the right thing. So what you have is a very long road here. We work with a company about five years ago called DNV Certification from Norway. They measure verify, quantify all of this. They do the GE wind turbines, they do LNG tankers, they do it for carbon. So basically what you have to see is a shift in corporate America to A, look, measuring, quantifying, and verifying their carbon footprint, B, turning this into a real business. Now that's one part of the equation. Now, you step back, it was, I want to make it a little segue here, talking about buildings. Buildings are a big piece of the carbon puzzle. In New York City, energy auditors today give a report. NOx, SOx, CO2 emissions, and nothing is done. It's all very nice we have green building standards. There are only 6,000 green buildings. The bigger fish to fry is the retrofit market. I did the World Trade Center's energy efficiency programs. Who bought in? Morgan Stanley, Euro brokers, the cost of money. So what we have to look at is how do you attack the carbon problem through commercial office space, through, through uh, shopping malls, through office buildings, through corporate America. I've worked 17 years on climate change. Why now? 
Well, this has risen as a corporate financial issue. You are seeing a number of companies change their tune on carbon and greenhouse and climate change. Corporate America is driving this train. Who are the laggards? Unfortunately, the political sector. And one thing we're very leery of is poorly executed market design. This has already happened twice. If you recall, in California, 2002, 2001, we bankrupted three investor-owned utilities with poor market design. And we've seen in the EU ETS a failure in phase one, a market collapse from 30 euros to 80 euro cents. The real market begins next year. We're now seeing the banks move into this market. There is a green screen. TXU deal is symptomatic of not building lignite fired coal plants and the inability to get by with, we're going to grandfather this. No, you're going to be part of a federal regime. Power stations last 40, 60 years. We're seeing life extension now in nuclear power because nuclear, despite its problems on waste disposal and mining, does not make carbon emissions, and we're at 90% dispatch. Consumers now want green power. This is a generational issue. What are you doing for my family? What are you doing for my grandchildren? You're going to see this move next fall to conference committee. We will see legislation. Now, inside the Beltway.